Well, hi, I'm Harry Dent. I'm an American economist and author of a number of books. The most recent is The Great Depression Ahead. And I think a lot of people know me more from my earlier books, 1992, The Great Boom Ahead, and in 1998, The Roaring 2000s. Obviously, we were predicting this incredible boom, and even back in those books, and back as far as the late 80s, we were saying that this great boom around the world in developed countries from the United States to Australia to Europe would end around 2008, 9 and we would go into an extended downturn and what history calls a depression. Uh, I'm going to be speaking in Australia on the 19th, 20th, and 21st of June in Brisbane, Sydney, and Melbourne at the Booming in the Bus Symposium. This is the only time I'm going to be in Australia this year because I have a very heavy commitment for a 20-city conference tour in the United States. So I'm very happy I could make it to Australia. I wanted to uh, help promote the book in Australia. I love Australia. Uh, and I'll tell you, uh, from our forecasting tools, which I'll give you some idea of, Australia will weather this downturn better than any other of the developed countries in Europe or the United States or Canada or even New Zealand. Obviously, it's a whole nother thing in, in emerging countries like China. Now, for people who are not familiar with our work, here's what we do different. We look out decades in advance, not just years. We have simple tools like, for example, the spending wave. The spending wave is simply a chart where we take the birth index, adjust it for immigration in a country like Australia or the United States or Great Britain, and we move it forward 46 years, which is the peak in spending of the average household in developed countries. We call it Homer Simpson in the United States. That simple chart will tell you where the economy is headed, when it's going to boom and bust in different countries almost five decades in advance. And of course, that's the reason, even back 20 years ago, we said we would see a downturn. The baby boom generation around the Western and developed world is peaking out in their incredible spending and productivity cycle, and they're going to become savers, and they're going to slow down uh, for, for over a decade before we start an extended boom. And we have, number two, the greatest housing bubble in history. And, you know, Australia does not suffer very much of a demographic downturn like even New Zealand or Canada or the United States and Europe is, is actually horrible. Uh, but Australia does have very high real estate compared to incomes and was a part of this worldwide real estate bubble. This is the only bubble of this magnitude in real estate we've seen in, in 150 years. So that's the key. Uh, of this downturn is the deleveraging of our banking systems, uh, particularly the United States where we went nuts. You have a much better banking system in, in Australia, New Zealand, and even Canada than the United States does. But real estate doubled and in some cases tripled in five years and banks lent against that. That's the theme of this downturn. Real estate is going to continue to devalue and go back to where it's affordable, which is good long term for the economy, and banks are going to continue to have to write off loans and write down loans. So that's what creates something we call deflation. We're going to look in this seminar, not just about economic trends, how long this downturn is going to last, when there's going to be opportunities in stocks and commodities and real estate, and what type of entrepreneurial opportunities there will be for creative business people and individuals to transition from careers to your own business and et cetera. But we're going to look at how these assets fall and how we get deflation instead of inflation. Now note, for a lot of the people that are talking about a downturn and, and that we're not going to come out of this anytime soon, they're saying all this stimulus and money printing is going to create inflation. We're showing throughout history, with no exceptions, bubble booms like this and like the Roaring Twenties uh, and like the 1980s in Japan are always followed by deflation because these bubbles deflate and you destroy more credit and money than the governments create. So, so very important to understand that because if you're banking on inflation, you'll make the wrong investments and you'll look at the wrong businesses. Now, so Australia does not have, again, the steep demographic decline, the best developed country, the strongest probably likely to continue immigration policies. Uh, Australia, though, will also be hurt by a commodity cycle. Now, most people, uh, this, this Generational cycles, demographics we talk about, the economies peak about every 40 years. You think economists would understand this. Look at it, 1929, 1968, and now 2007, major peaks that see extended downturns and stocks don't come back for a long time. 
But most people aren't aware that every 29 to 30 years, commodity cycles peak. Now, commodity cycles are not that important in the United States. We're not big commodity producers. We're not big exporters. In Australia, the commodity cycle is very important. So you have to understand that commodity cycles after probably rallying in 2009 are going to come back down. Things like coal, things like oil, things like gold and silver and copper and metals are going to come back down as the world falls again. So our biggest message in, 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 in this booming in the bus symposium, you have to understand the landscape. You have to understand that this is not an ordinary recession. We are not going to just come out of this suddenly because governments stimulated around the world, particularly the United States and China. This deleveraging of the banking system and debt, this long downward slide of baby boomers around the world, not, not in China and India, but in all the developed countries which drive the exports of countries like China and India, their biggest part of their economy. Uh, this is going to keep working against the government, and we're going to see a bounce in 2009. We predicted this in the book, The Great Depression. We said there's going to be a bounce in the stock markets based on government stimulus, and it's probably going to not going to last past the summer of 2009. And then we're going to start to see stocks come down and the economy is going to be falling again by 2010. We want you to see this coming. The investors and creative business people and entrepreneurs that see this coming are going to do incredibly well. The last times we've seen extended downturns were the 1970s and the 1930s. These were the most entrepreneurial times and where smaller companies did much, much better than larger companies. And a lot of people learned to transition from their job into their own business. I saw a survey just the other day that there was something like, for example, in the United States, 14% of people have subcontract businesses that do business for other businesses and provide services. It's supposed to grow to 24% and they're not even taking into account this downturn, which will throw more people unemployed and give more incentive to do this. So again, I want you to consider coming to this symposium, booming in the bust. I think it's going to be one of the greatest seminars you could see in Australia at this time. Again, it's the only time I'm going to be in Australia this year. So I look forward to seeing you there. Please register today. The other speakers are also really, really good, and they're there to help you grow your business and prosper in this unavoidable downturn. Again, the best times for entrepreneurs. I'll see you there.